Good evening all. My name is Dr. Siddharth Suri. I'm a junior resident at the Department of Radio Diagnosis in Kasturba Medical College, Manipal. And my topic for today is imaging features of intracranial hypertension with treatment using CT-guided epidural blood patch repair. Aims. This paper aims to underscore the importance of a thorough understanding of comprehensive imaging and diagnosis of intracranial hypertension and the efficacy of CT-guided targeted epidural blood patch repair for the treatment of the same. To further assess and follow up patients who underwent epidural blood patch post-diagnosis of spontaneous intracranial hypertension, this study is a rep representation of these cases. A brief introduction. Intracranial hypertension is primarily caused by a decrease in the CSF volume, leading to reduced intracranial pressure. This etiology could be primary, that is spontaneous leaks, or secondary due to trivial trauma or iatrogenic complications. Patients with a history of connective tissue disorders are at a relatively higher risk. The resultant decreased CSF and low pressure may lead to multiple radiological presentations, contributing to a wide variety of symptoms. Epidural blood patch repair procedure involves injecting the patient's own blood, autologous, into the epidural space to promote clot formation at the site or the expected site of the leak. This intervention aims to restore normal CSF volume and flow dynamics and thus alleviate the symptoms. It can be performed under CT or fluoroscopic guidance. Types of CSF spinal leaks. There are four types. Type 1, dural tear. 1A being ventral, 1B being dorsal. Type 2, proximal nerve root sleeve tear and meningeal, meningeal diverticular bardural ectasia, type 3 being a distal nerve root sleeve tear, and type 4 being a CSF venous fistula, which is a diagnosis of exclusion. Imaging features of intracranial hypertension on CT. CT is although not very sensitive in detecting the spectrum of imaging associated with idiopathic intracranial hypertension, it can only detect a limited number of features. Bilateral uh, detection of bilateral subdural collections that are hygromas or hemorrhages, pseudosubarachnoid hemorrhage, with effaced cisternal spaces and crowding of the foramen magna. This is a case of a 69-year-old male patient who was diagnosed with dementia, showing the same. MRI features. MRI may show a variable variety of spectrum in imaging findings, and early signs include uh, venous sinus engorgement and bulging. Normally, the venous sinus has flattened or concave borders, but in cases of idiopathic intracranial hypotension, these sinuses appear convex and bulging. This is best visualized on sagittal imaging. This is a case of a 36-year-old male patient with complaints of recurrent headache, showing the same. Pachymeningeal thickening with enhancement, which could be smooth or non-nodular, as depicted here. The pathophysiology being due to persistent venous congestion, there is non-inflammatory fibrocollagen proliferation of the meninges. This is a case of a 46-year-old male patient with migraine and spontaneous bilateral subdural hemorrhages, showing the same. Sagging of the brain, secondary to the loss of CSF and buoyancy. Visualize as mammillary body descent, fat pond sign, sloping of the ventricle, and drooping of the corpus callosum as depicted here. Effacement of cisternal spaces and subdural hygromas may also be seen. This is a case, case of a 69-year-old male patient who was previously diagnosed with dementia. Spinal signs. There could be epidural collections or focal dural defects. Ideally, T2 he uh, heavily weighted T2 sequences help in detecting the uh, Dural tear, the meningeal diverticular, and accurately help visualize the extent of the epidural collection. This is a case of a 30-year-old male patient with recurrent orthostatic headache since one month, showing a C1, C2 dural vertebral defect as shown here. Goals and treatment options. The goal is to alleviate the clinical symptoms and to restore the normal CSF dynamics. Conservative management includes hydration, bed rest, and caffeine intake. Definitive management includes epidural blood patch repair, which could be empirical or targeted. Epidural blood patch repair of CSF leak. Treatment for spontaneous intracranial hypotension is done by radiological intervention, that is epidural blood patch repair, post detection and confirmation of the leak site on CT myelogram, whether it be conventional CT myelography or ultrafast CT myelography. Case one is that of a 69 year old male with dementia, came coming in with an MMSE score, that is mini mental state examination score of 11 ataxia and recurrent headaches, CT myelography and epidural blood patch repair for the same was planned. The methodology of the case, under all strict aseptic precautions, a 22 gauge LP needle was inserted into the thecal sac in prone position at the L3 and L4 level as depicted here. Confirmation of the needle tip in the thecal sac and minimal contrast injection of 10 cc undiluted isosmolar contrast was given into the thecal sac 
and ultra dynamic uh, CT sections were taken of the cervical dorsal level. That was a region of interest with no evidence of leak. Patient was made to lie supine. A uh, uh, patient was made to lie in Schendlenburg, followed by supine position for 15 to 20 minute intervals with serial CT acquisition. There was a delayed pooling of contrast in the ventral epidural space uh, at lower cervical level, that is at C5 level, confirming the diagnosis of a CSF leak. Axial and sagittal images for the same have been provided. A targeted epidural blood patch repair was done. An 18 gauge needle was uh, injected into the C5 C6 vertebral level, again under all strict aseptic precautions. Good percolation of the epidural blood patch mixed with 1 ml of contrast was noted, extending along the anterior and posterior lower cervical epidural space. Follow up of that case patient came in with follow up one month after with significant improvement and uh, with occasional weakness complaints. Clinically, the patient has improved from an MMSE score of 11 to 24. And for further evaluation, a brain with whole spine MRI was planned. The MRI brain showed a significant interval reduction in the bilateral subdural hygromas with increased pontomammillary distance. The spine showed no evidence of an obvious leak. Case 2 is that of a 36-year-old male banker who presented with acute onset debilitating headache, which is relieved immediately on light now. On a CT spine, we could see a spur at the, C, at the D1, D2 level, and the MR brain showed prominent and rounded caliber of the superior sagittal sinus and transverse sinuses bilaterally with reduced pontomammillary distance, as depicted here. Diagnosis of idiopathic intracranial hypotension with CT myelogram and epidural blood patch repair for the same was planned. The methodology, under all strict aseptic precautions, a 23-gauge LP needle was inserted into the thecal, th thecal sac in a prone position at the L2-L3 vertebral level, and following subsequent myelograms were taken, showing the spur at the D1, D2 level, as depicted here, impinging onto the dural space. Using an 18-gauge epidural needle, 6 ml of venous blood admixed with air and 1 ml of contrast was injected into the epidural space. Subsequent CT showed good signs of blood patch repair uh, and uh, percolation along the epidural space. On follow-up, one month post-procedure, the patient had complete relief from headache with no fresh complaints. Results and discussion. Intracranial hypotension presents with a unique diagnostic challenge owing to its subtle imaging findings. Understanding of these features on CT and MRI is essential for a timely intervention and a good prognosis. CT-guided epidural blood patch repair is an effective therapeutic approach and offers quick symptomatic relief for patients. These are my references. Thank you.